Welcome to Shirt Coverlet. I am Adrian Ford. And I'm Dalton Gentry. And I don't like any of you. And this is Adrian Reed's Harry Potter. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, chapters 24 and 25. Wait. I'm not ready for this. You're ready for this. Go on. Okay, uh, we're getting closer and closer to the end of this book. We are. Uh, this will be the this last book. Tome. The last book that we tackled this year. Uh, we will try to get what, what is the the collection of beasts? The what is it? Fantastic beasts and where to find them? Yes. Okay. We will do a week on that, I believe. Okay. We will do an entire wrap up video for this book. Yes. But after we get done with Goblet of Fire, there will be a bit of a hiatus before we hit the next book. Yeah. Uh, because Adrian refuses to read books broken up by years. Like, yeah. December 31st hits, Adrian's reading is done. He can't be in the middle of a book. Yeah. But that's okay. Just Everyone a Everyone has warning. things, okay? Everyone has things. Everyone has things. Uh, but anyway, let's get a brief rundown here. We have chapters 24, uh, Rita Skeeter's Scoop. Uh, Hagrid is temporarily replaced at Hogwarts by Professor Grudley Plank. Uh, Bagman offers Harry help uh, again. And Dumbledore defends Hagrid's honor and says that he's a great professor and this is all Rita Skeeter's fault, blah, blah, blah. A very weird scene from Dumbledore here. Uh, Chapter 25, The Egg and the Eye. Moaning Myrtle helps Harry solve the egg in the bath, which makes Myrtle a creep. We're going to get into that. Uh, we find out that the next task involves mermaids, merpeople. Uh, and Barty... Mer, merpersons. Merpersons. And Barty crouches in Hogwarts. He's supposed to be missing, but he's creeping around Hogwarts. He's and around we, Snape's office. Yes, he's allegedly broken into Snape's office. It makes me uncomfortable. And Moody saves Harry again from mean old Snape. Yeah. Yeah. So, wh what did you get from this? Where would you like to start? What do you want to talk about? I'm still on Snape's side is where I'd like to... Um... There's there's some quotage. Quotage? Yes. J.K. Rowling has quotage? Yes. Well, I thought he must be, she said, shrugging. I knew he couldn't be pure giant because they're about 20 feet tall. But honestly, all this hysteria about giants, they can't be all that horrible. It's the same sort of prejudice that people have towards werewolves. It's just bigotry, isn't it? Ron looked as though he would have liked to reply scathingly, but perhaps he didn't want another row, because he contented himself with shaking his head disbelievingly while Hermione wasn't looking. I know that this... I'm fairly positive, unless the dates are strange, that this was published before 9-11. Okay. But that feels a lot like... Uh, I, I won't say Islamophobic, but the anti-Muslim rhetoric that sort of rose up around that. Okay. Um, things like, uh, well, if, if you translate that straight, uh, I knew he couldn't be full American because of blank. Yes. But, uh, yeah, he's always seemed different. He must have been Muslim, right? Yeah. Uh, there was a lot of anti-Muslim anti sentiment. Um based on ideas of what Islam was or of what Muslims did versus what we... What, for example, um, so the 70s. Um, in the 70s, uh, Muhammad Ali yes. was very outspoken about being a Muslim. Yes, he was. He was a cultural icon speaking about being a Muslim. Uh, 30 years later... Muslims are the people that fly planes into buildings. That's the Reddit, right? I mean, that's what, that is the meme that, that goes through our minds. Uh, you know, we have to, we have to understand that being Muslim does not force one to do that. Correct. Right? Correct. Being giants, that's what this sounds like, does yes. not force one to be um, this way. Okay. So uh, that's what that felt like. Okay. And I do think it's interesting that we do see Hagrid temporarily replaced. Uh, and, you know, they point out the fact that a lot of parents complained, which is the unfortunate half of the education system, especially in the United States. Uh, if a parent complains about something and there's enough of them, 
clearly you're not doing your job right. We'll just replace you. That's fine. Right. Uh, oh, where was I going with this? But anyway, okay. What uh, I would really like to point out with this here is why is Hagrid removed? Hagrid is removed because of Rita Skeeter. This is uh, sensational journalism at its worst. This is the American journalism system right now. Is it at its worst, though? Mm. Everyone seems to think that this... Uh, what was her name that replaced him? Grubbly Plank? Grubbly Plank is a better teacher, down to Hermione. Hermione feels that this, this Grubbly Plank is a better professor teacher than Hagrid was. Okay. Is there someone who could perform the job better? Absolutely. But we're replacing Hagrid just because of who he is. Right. We're, we're not he, replacing him because he is failing as a teacher. But that's that's the, different. That's the damnedest thing about this this pair of chapters though, isn't it? Despite the fact that we're replacing him for who he is, not what he does, um, he doesn't seem to be doing very well. And we do get someone that is more perhaps effective. I just there's a very clear difference between replacing somebody based on them, their race, essentially. And replacing somebody based on their merit. Okay, so we're replacing him based on his his race, but does it work out? Who cares if it works out? Right, but it does work out. This is... Is that a problem in, in the text? Is it a problem in the text? Perhaps. But just because he's being replaced, we're not replacing him via merit. Uh, this is... But we're getting more merit on the back end, aren't we? Oh, uh, uh, I, uh, politics. So what What's narrative her name? What narrative is old J.K. presenting? This is California 1970s Harvey Milk. Okay. Proposition 6 or Proposition 8. You've seen the movie. Yes, I have. It's a great movie, by the way. Uh, but this is what it is. We're replacing an educator because an educator is homosexual. It's someone who that's inherent of their being. But we're going to replace them because homosexuals are dangerous. Right. And Which scary. is the wrong thing to do. It is the wrong thing to do. But in the text, it works out. But Hagrid, Hagrid comes back. Clearly. Right. But he is the inferior teacher. It doesn't matter if he's the inferior teacher. Wh then why present that in the text? Maybe that's a flaw by JK. I don't know. Maybe a what? A flaw by J.K. I've said bad things about J.K. Rowling. A what? I've said plenty of bad things about her. Uh, you what, mate? Well, we just went down a rabbit hole there. Uh, anyway, I wasn't even expecting to go there. I didn't even me think either. about it. <laughs> uh, but Rita Skeeter, this, this seems to be her fault. And this is coming from... Basically, she finds out that Hagrid is a half-giant. And she runs a, a sensational story. Yeah, uh, I'm wondering if, if she has some type of bug on Harry that's recording things or something. You think so? Because it seems like there are small things that that she shouldn't know. Okay. Uh, but this seems very much like the turn that media has taken lately. Uh, where we get a snippet of something's going on here and we just create an entire story about it. Uh, which doesn't help, it doesn't benefit, it doesn't report the news, which is what journalists are supposed to do. It just creates problems. <laughs> right. Um, well, one of the things that it reminds me of in today's politics, which is going to date this video, and we all know that Harry Potter should be presented in a timeless fashion, but Billy Bush was fired for the exchange on the bus with Trump, right? Okay. Um, I see Billy Bush as sort of a, a, a victim there. He, if, if you have... Here's the thing. We've all been in a position where someone who... Trump was not his boss, but he was definitely an authority figure in that position, okay. right? You're working for, was it Access Hollywood? I'm not sure. I'm you're, not you're working for, for example, Access Hollywood, and they tell you, get a story with Trump. Your job is don't piss off Trump. So when Trump goes on one of these tirades, I know that laughter. That is an uncomfortable laughter that Billy Bush is exhibiting on that, <laughs> on that uh, bus, right? He doesn't want these things. It, it doesn't sound, maybe I'm, I'm not going to speak for him. It doesn't sound like he really necessarily wanted things to go this way. Okay. But he has to humor that guy. Okay. Right? Uh, well, let's move on from Hagrid and all this journalism. Uh, Bagman, again, is offering Harry help. How do you feel about all these uh, professors, teachers, uh, uh, the judge of one of the games, uh, 
pandering to Harry Potter well, because I, he's the champion for Hogwarts. I have a quote for that as well. Okay. It's a little snippet. Um, less than about a half page of reading. Wonder if I can have a quick word with you, Harry, said Bagman eagerly. You couldn't you couldn't give us a moment, you two, could you? Er, okay, said Ron and Hermione, and Hermione went off to find a table. Bagman led Harry along the bar to the end furthest from Madame Rosmerta. Well, I just thought I'd congratulate you on your splendid performance against that horn tail, Harry, said Bagman. Really superb. Thanks, said Harry. But he knew this couldn't be all that Bagman wanted to say because he could have congratulated Harry in front of Ron and Hermione. Bagman didn't seem in any particular rush to spill the beans, though. Harry saw him glance into the mirror over the bar at the goblins, who were all watching him, and Harry and him and Harry in silence through their dark, slanting eyes. I think that is a masterful little snippet building a contrarian and skeptic. Okay. Because it is Harry who picks up on the cues, right? He wouldn't ask me to come over here if he just wanted to congratulate me. He could have done that in front of Ron and Hermione. He wants something more from this. So he gets that from the situation, okay. right? And then through observation, he says, well, Bagman's still watching these guys. So what's going on there? Okay. Uh, now, I know you are... Are you still uh, strong about Bagman's the bad guy? I'm still not convinced he isn't. Okay. Um... I, I just find it very interesting that all the professors here, Mad-Eye Moody, Ludo Bagman, uh, Hagrid at one point, are all putting their careers and integrity on the line by saying, hey, really be great if you were championing. How about I help you out a little bit? Well, but I think that the, uh, the overwhelming sentiment there is that uh, the other contestants are getting help as well. With the exception of Cedric. With the exception of Cedric, right. who seems to be excelling. Right. Uh, so, poor Cedric, apparently. Nobody likes the Hufflepuffs, but we knew that going in from the start. Weren't you a Hufflepuff? No, I was a Ravenclaw. Oh. I was with Cho. Well, I like, I like the Hufflepuffs, then. Okay. Uh, but Cedric does help Harry Potter as well. He gives him the hint about the egg, tells him to go take a bath in the prefix bathroom. Uh, we get a delightfully creepy scene between Harry and Myrtle. Yeah. Uh, because Myrtle apparently spends her days just creeping on men in the bathroom. Yeah, I don't want to talk about sex necessarily in this show. I think we try to keep that out of here most of the time. But yeah, what a weird thing. Uh, especially with how, how sentient um, some of those... How sentient some of the remarks in that little exchange are with... They know, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, Harry, Harry looked to make sure the bubbles were covering him. Yes. Myrtle, uh, at one point, Myrtle even says that it took Cedric, you know... Took him so long that all the bubbles were almost right. gone. That's how Moaning Myrtle should talk, by the right. way. Uh, so it is a bizarre scene. Right. It's very bizarre. Uh, but we do find out that the egg... Uh, we do find out the next task. It is going to be involving people. Something is going to be taken from Harry Potter. And it will be his job to retrieve something that is precious to him. Yes. Uh, so how do, you, how do you feel about this, knowing uh, an idea of what the next task is going to be? Um... You know, you try to stay away from sex in, in books about a, a child's... In, in, in videos about a child's book. But um, we go straight from some creepy old woman watching young men bathe to the inclusion of mermaids. And I don't know... I don't know how we're going to steer clear of it, Dalton. Yeah? I don't know. Well, I... I don't think it's in the text. How be damned if we talked about sex in Harry Potter. No, 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 no. it's not here. Uh, not so here. are you just going to? I'm gonna... sure there are videos for you to find that on the internet, but that's not that's not what we do here at Short Cover Lit. Are you just going to completely dismiss this and move on at this yes. point? Okay, until uh, I have something particular to harp about. Okay, uh, let's talk about Barty Crouch. Barty Crouch is in Hogwarts. Uh, allegedly, he has gone. Uh, he's ill. Apparently, he's ill, but nobody's been able to find him. Nobody's been able to contact him. But apparently, he is creeping around Hogwarts. I wonder if he's baiting himself. Okay. Right? If he is not the bad guy. Okay. I don't think he's the bad guy. That'd be too simple in, in, in the world of Scooby-Doo. So, I think that what's going on here is all these people are disappearing because the, the bad guys are taking them, right? So, if one of these good guys disappears and arouses suspicion that the bad guys took him... Well, then he gets some lead on the bad guys. Okay. Right? So you think Barty because Crouch... Because someone's, someone's going to speak up, no, they they don't have him. Okay. Which means we don't have him. I Something do think like there's that. an interesting line. I, I don't have it verbatim here. 
Uh, but Mad Eye Moody, an Or, who is historically known as being a bit psychotic as an Or, uh, right. very paranoid, uh, basically says, "You think I'm bad? Oh, Crouch! Yeah, you don't fuck around with him." Right. So that's interesting. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about Rita. Okay, Rita the person. Let's talk about Rita the person. Um, in fact, not just the person, but things on Rita's person. Okay. Uh, the makeup. Okay. We always get we get this line. Rita has heavily penciled eyebrows. Uh, lines far less egregious than that have caused entire shitstorms on book two, right? <laughs> we, no. are, we are clearly seeing Rita being painted as evil through the, her use of makeup, right? Yes. Um, and I think that is interesting. Um, especially for someone who's supposed to be so forward-thinking as old JK. Um, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, <laughs> thoughts that won't cause a complete firestorm? I don't know. Uh... It is interesting. Don't yell at us. JK is doing it. (laughs) Um, Who else's makeup has been mentioned? No one. But this the most scathing individual in, in so far, the entirety of Harry Potter. She's not the most evil, but she is the most scathing, yes. Okay. Voldemort lets you know, I kind of want to kill you. Uh, Rita says, hey man, we're friends. Tell me some shit. I, I, if I, uh, I'm, I'm trying to rack my brain here. It's been many years since I've read this next not next book, but the sixth book. Um, I do believe we we do get another female character who is just scathingly evil. Yes. And I believe her perfume is constantly mentioned. Okay. Constantly. Um, is she fat? No. No. Okay. Um, well, I think that is interesting to look at what's going on there, though. Okay. Um. What is Rita's ploy? Rita's ploy is saying, Hey, man, we're friends. Now tell me some shit that I can use against you. Okay. She's putting on a false face. Yes. And she's quite literally putting on a false face. Yes. Okay. Um, so I think that's what, what old JK is clumsily getting around to. Um, but, but another thing. Rita's nails were painted a shocking pink. I'd like to talk about makeup for a moment. Just makeup. Please do. I find nail polish and nail polish culture extremely fascinating. Okay. Do you know much? You you, you know about makeup. Um, uh, I've spent I've spent I've been retail management since I was eighteen. Okay. Okay. I am now thirty one. Uh, I look good for thirty one, but I am thirty one. Um, have you have you noticed? Have you done much looking at nail polish? No. I know you shop with the guy liner and the the lipstick. Is it lipstick eyeshadow a little bit? Maybe some blush. I not often. Okay, so in all this time that I've been retail management, I have been the cosmetics guy several times. Okay. You always have to have someone who's who's over cosmetics, and sometimes that's me. And me and nail polish names are incredibly interesting. Okay. Uh, they go out of their way to have a ringing name. I mean, there are nail polishes that have better names than poems. Okay. Than classic poems, okay? Okay. More interesting names. Names that, that do a better job of describing the nail polish than that title does of describing the poem. It's just, it's fascinating to me. And a couple on a literary level that have uh, stuck out to me over the years. I saw once Lolita's Pink. Oh my. Yeah. That's, um, I can't imagine the boardroom where that took place. Here's what happened in that boardroom. No one had read Lolita. Except for the person who who put forward that name. Uh, no, here's what happened in that boardroom. They said we're in a cram. Somebody just just call it something, and somebody's yeah. like, "All right, there you go." Guy, why would you assume it was a guy, Dalton? Uh, guy is used inter- interchangeably between the sexes. Now. Why? It's, okay. it's acceptable. Isn't that just awfully talk about your makeup. patriarchal? Talk about your makeup. Um, also, I saw the Grape Gatsby. That's funny. Actually. Yeah, it was it, obviously a uh, uh, shade of purple, but the most troubling uh, nail polish name that I have ever seen Okay, was an orange, a bright orange, that was called Jailbait. Holy shit! Yeah, like that's not you're not even masking it at that point. You're not even masking it at that point. Okay. So, I do know that the majority of people who buy, buy nail polish are feminine or female, and I do know that a majority of our audience is female, so... If you have a favorite literary nail polish, 
I would like to see you list it below. Like, should we go on a crusade against the nail polish industry? That's no, terrifying. No, I, I, I... With the exception of Lolita's pink and jailbait, I think that they're incredibly interesting. I like... There's no harm in most of them. Okay. Those were fairly egregious. I will... I that will was ridiculous. Well, those are the two you brought up. I mean, yeah. I, I, the Great Gatsby's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of things like that. It's, it's a very punny culture, okay. if I can call it a culture. Okay. Um, but if you have a favorite literary nail polish, I would enjoy seeing that below. Uh, what is your favorite nail polish name? And for fun, uh, maybe make up some nail polishes with literary themes in the comments section below. For for me, I like to think of a deep crimson known as Hemingway's ceiling. <laughs> see how much fun... See, That's dark. Where does that laugh come from? <laughs> Santa Claus? <laughs> Oh, 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 that was my oh shit you said that laugh Come it's on, funny but I'm like oh my god uh, <laughs> think of the fun we can have with this so uh, now that we're done talking about Harry Potter we'd like to remind you that in case this video series fails we're going into the makeup business I would <laughs> seriously like to be on that board the, nail po the naming of nail polishes get me that job That's someone incredible. tell me how you get there uh, do you <laughs> Do you have anything else to say about Harry Potter? Uh, at this a couple point? things. Okay, please, please do. Uh, did ha did Hagrid's parents die in the Voldy Wars? Uh, I you don't, don't have to answer. I don't but, know but if it's it ever seems addressed. To be, it seems to be hinted at here, doesn't it? More so, yes. Um, because Hagrid has a, a liking for Harry that he does not care to explain at this point. Okay. Um, using the Marauder's Map under the Invisible Cloak while carrying the Golden Egg. Just to piss people off, I'm going to compare Harry here... To a nuclear submarine. Okay. And it's sexist. Okay. I'm not going to explain those things. I'm just going to go with it? I Just lay it on the line? Yeah. Okay. I don't read the comments for Harry Potter, so don't we'll have to deal with it. Thank you. Also, uh, along fairly similar lines, uh, we have Mad-Eye approaching Harry to be an Auror. Right? Yes. So he is approaching him to be a military man, isn't he? Okay. Yeah, very much so. Uh, Mad Eye has taken an investment in Harry, an interest in Harry, uh, and he thinks that would be what he would be most suited to do. Be uh, a military man. Well, I um, it's one of those things. If at a very young age you're famous for defeating the greatest warrior of all times, you're probably going to end up in that line of work eventually. Well, but I, I I'm not making any any negative connotation there. I'm just saying it, it seems um, we, we've done a lot. We've talked a lot about. This is a a literary uh, exploration of what happens when the uh, baby boomer generation yes. inherits the earth. Well, they have to they have to manufacture that uh, military industrial complex, don't yes. they? Because military industrial complex is big business, and somebody get makes money off of it. And you know the war likes the world likes to be at war. So you're the most famous wizard ever. Why don't you go into the military? Um, there seems to be a lot of, uh, like, like I said, with the whole uh, analogy of a nuclear submarine. Yes. You know, carrying the golden egg under the invisibility cloak with the Marauder's Map. He's got the sonar, and you can't see him, and he's got the big weapon, right? So I, I think that there are, I think that there's a lot of that at play here. Okay. Uh, well, we will get more into this next week. We're going to be moving on to chapters 26 and 27. This will be the second task, and Padfoot returns. Uh, like I did mention uh, in the beginning of this, this will be the last Harry Potter book of the seven that we will finish this year. Uh, but we will be continuing on with the remaining three books early next year. Uh, uh, so, go on. The remaining three books? Remaining there's three books. four now, isn't there? Yes, this is number four. But there's four more books now, aren't there? No, there's. we're going to go years one through seven. We're not going to read Cursed Child. I'm going to force you through Cursed Child again. Okay, if you want. Because this is, you force this is what me you want. Harry Potter. Uh, but make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. We will be continuing uh, Adrian Reads Harry Potter. This is one of our favorite series, one of the viewers' favorite series. Adrian's favorite thing to read every week. Right? This is also a good time for me to plug the fact that I might smother Dalton in his sleep. If you would like to follow us on social media, we are on Twitter at Strip Cover. We are on Facebook at Strip Cover Lit. And if you would like to see us go through the journey of reviewing Harry Potter movies, make sure you join us on Twitter at Aristocrat Show. Yes. Aristocrat and on YouTube Show. at The Aristocrats. Yes. 